Okay, well, it is 8.30, and uh, as I said, here's my um, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, and everyone's got that right. Wednesday morning ramble up here in the vines. Thanks for all your suggestions yesterday of which vines to go to. And uh, this was a popular one with the views. So I've come up to my original Fitu vineyard. This is uh, Sam Rock. So uh, if you've got your tea towels at the ready, uh, have a look on your tea towels. And we're at Sam Rock, uh, which is like top right on the vineyard, on the tea towel. So have you got your tea towels and just let me know what you're up to this morning. Uh, have you got the coffee on, the tea, a cup of tea with you? I know Julia's got a cup of tea already, but just let me know what you're up to. So, uh, oh, uh, and please just chat amongst yourselves. Just have a ram ramble amongst yourselves while I ramble on down here. So I've come up to the Sand Rock Vineyard because this is one of my absolute favourite vineyards. This is the first vineyard that I bought in the village of Touchon. And so just to locate you, in this direction is the village of Touchon. So we're about 10 minutes out of Touchon uh, that way, and that is heading towards the Roussillon. So if you can see the Totevel Tower just in the background over there, you can just make out the Albert in this direction. If you come round here, you have the cliffs of Van Gros, Van Gros and behind that you have the beaches, Whoa. the beaches of Le Cat, La Franqui, uh, La Palme and the village of Fitu where the Appalachian name Fitu comes from is over there. We come around, the sun is, it's changed position, it's sort of a bit lower um, than previously. Uh, over here we're in the Narbonne direction. So this is the rest of the Languedoc. So Domen Jones, we're really on the border between Languedoc and Roussillon. We come pan round here. You might be able to hear the wind. That's the north wind is blowing this morning. It's actually a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be. And yeah, you can just make out some yurts. So uh, up here, if anybody fancies a yurt holiday, there's a Sam Rock, so named, same name as my vineyard, Sam Rock uh, Yurts here, if you like nature and sleeping in a yurt and round here and this is the Carcassonne direction so just below the Montoche the Toche mountain that rises up to 900 meters you probably feel the north wind uh, so blowing quite strongly actually now um, and here you've got a lovely almond tree so we've got some almonds already on the tree and then pan round and this is the Toche mountain so just we're just at the base of the Toche mountain we're at about 350 meters high and while I was waiting for you I was actually quite worried because it's hunting day today so the hunting dogs are out and they're literally just over that hill um, so I just phoned John Mark quickly and just said oh am I all right because I get a bit scared with the hunting dogs and he's like yeah don't be silly you're fine and what I saw anyway is I'm actually in the vineyard that, and the electric fence is on so I thought if anything did head this way, uh, it's not going to get into the vineyard. So I'm totally protected here. So electric fence is on. Nikki, you got that? Watch out for the fence. Uh, those fences are on because now coming up to harvest, uh, we have literally, we're waiting for the grapes to ripen. So let's go and have a look to see how they're getting on. Uh, and also we're keeping the wild boar out. Basically, we want our grapes to be able to reach full maturity um, easily. And so basically it's all the work that we've been doing during the growing season now all comes into play, but we want to keep out those wild boar. Hence this fence that goes all the way around the vineyard. Again, any questions you have, please put them in the box below. Also, I'll be asking you a question at the end of uh, the session today. So uh, to win some herbs, so to win some wild herbs from one, <coughs> one of my vineyards here in Touchon. And as I was walking along here, can you see this? This is um, it's actually boxwood, but if you see on the hedgerow, all the boxwood is dying. And it's, uh, it's really quite dramatic. It's apparently it's a moth that's attacking boxwood trees. And most of the boxwood surrounding the vineyards has actually died. And when you're driving along, you could just make out these brown uh, boxwood trees 
quite, it's quite scary, quite dramatic. But let's go and have a look at our vineyard. And let's talk about the weather a little bit. What's the weather like over with you? Let me know what the weather's like today, uh, wherever you're watching me from. Here, so it's about 22 degrees at the moment. So quite nice and fresh, but uh, we're forecasting a canicule. So a canicule or a vague de chaleur. A uh, vague is a wave, chaleur is heat. So we've got a heat wave on its way. A heat wave or a canicule. Um, these are actually defined as when for th at least three days, temperatures don't drop below 17 degrees, and that's at night. So uh, temperatures can rise up to about 35 um, degrees centigrade and they don't drop below 17 at night and when it's for a continued period of time it's the heat wave so a vague de chaleur or canicule as opposed to a peak de chaleur so a peak de chaleur is just when you have a very hot period just for 24 to 48 hours so canicule on its way canicule if you want the French accent canicule and uh, let's have a look at these grapes. So here's a lovely old Carignan. Now, because we're quite high up, you can see that the Veraison, the changing in colour, it's still happening. See? So uh, for Fitu, you need Carignan, Grenache and Syrah. And in this vineyard, we have all three of those grape varieties, which we'll just take a look at. Um, and you can see here, Take a look, oh, look, these are a bit darker, but still just a little one here, not quite turned, one here too. So I say we're getting to the end of Veraison, but we're up here, here, some lovely old Carignan grapes. Oh, but then look here, bright green. So these are what we call the grappillon. So the grappillon at the end of the bunches here, at the end of the stalks, um, these are not ripe yet and they will remain a lot more acidic than the, the grapes. You can see here the bunches in the middle of the vine that are a lot riper than these on the end. So those will be discarded uh, when we pick. So Carignan, Grenache, Syrah. Those three grape varieties go into the Fitu here. These vines are 100 years old. Here, just take a look. Look, oh, it's so good to get back and to say hello. Bonjour, Vine, I've missed you. Did have a good time in beer, it's so, but I did miss you. And here, the lovely old trunks of the old vines here. And this is, I think, where old vines really come into their own. When it's really hot, now we've got the hot weather, the canicule on its way. And these vines, if you just, take a longer shot out here look they're still so lovely and green so still lovely and green and that's because their roots because these vines are 100 years old their roots go a very long way down so at least five meters and it just means that they can always get the water so lovely old vines they also they have a lower yield so they don't need as much energy to ripen the grapes either and all this work we've been doing during the year the plowing the plowing's really helped with the soil uh look it's actually you can see here oh there's a long trailer coming out of here don't know where he's going there and thank goodness as well for the moment absolutely no sign of wild boar so no signs of wild boar here so here you can see, so there's a little less leaves. Now, contrary to in the UK where you really need to get as much sunlight onto the grapes, here we keep, we have to have enough leaves to cover the grapes. If we don't have leaves covering the grapes, uh, they're going to burn now in the hot sunshine. So we need to keep grapes covered by as much as possible covered by leaves just to protect them from the sunshine so here's otherwise they will burn they will get too hot and they'll burn so a bit different i saw a quick video the other day somebody it's actually hugo um 
was leaf stripping. Uh, we don't do any leaf stripping here. We do shoot thinning during the spring, but we don't do any leaf stripping, especially on the old vines, because I mean, they haven't, oh, haven't got that many leaves on them anyway. And we need those leaves to protect the bunches. Oh, I thought that was a wild boar coming. Uh, from, from the sunshine. So take a look here. So all looking good. I wanted to try and show you the gobele, why we call it gobele. So this is a classic old vine. Uh, that's a carignan that we're looking at. Uh, and it's pruned in the gobele. So to pronounce gobele, uh, it's gob, like spit or mouth, gob. And then you just go, uh, gob, uh, and then lay, like lay an egg. Gobele, gob, uh, lay. So gobele here. And this is what we want to achieve. If you take a look here, a gobele is like a goblet or a, a wine, like a wine glass shape. And here you want all of these grapes sort of hanging round the outside. You don't want them all bunched up together in the middle. Too many bunches in the middle. And then it's really difficult for them to all get the sunshine. Whereas here, like if you look in the middle of here, because we thin them out, there's like, there's no, there's one couple of bunches there, but they're not all crammed together in the middle. They're so evenly spaced round. And that will really help now with the ripening of the grapes. So I wanted to come down here and just take you over. So this is Carignan Grenache, a mixture. It's co-planted. It would have been planted together at the same time. And you can see even we did put some little Grenache replacements in here. They still seem to be fine. So coping with the dry weather so far. Down we come. So Fitu, the name of the Fitu appellation uh, comes from the town down by the coast, which is actually called Fitu. But there's actually nine other villages that can, uh, sorry, nine villages in total that can produce Fitu. One of them being Tushom, where I am, which is about an hour's drive from the coast and from the village of Fitu. So nine villages all together that can produce Fitu. So now we've changed grape variety. This is on wires. This is at Domen Jones. This is the only vine that we train on wires and it's the Syrah grape. So really um, you can identify it by the shape of the bunches, long and thin, quite tightly packed bunches on this Syrah. And this is some of the oldest Syrah in Touchant. So this is about 45 years old. Chained on the wires because if not, it would just sprawl. So it would sprawl on the ground rather than growing upright like the Carignan and the Grenache. But these looking lovely and very raison, I would say. So you've got the Grapillon. Has anybody heard of Verjus? Because this was another little project that I wanted to do. Verjus is actually, uh, you make, it's like a, a juice that you make from these little tiny grapes here because they're so acidic a verju is you use it in cooking to replace like lemon juice because it's that acidic and people like actually pre if people green harvest we don't green harvest but if we did we'd collect them and then you press them and you get what's called a verju um, and I'm quite tempted to do that I don't think Jean-Marc would be too happy but it would take ages as well to go around and actually pick these grappillons now to make some verju to have that for cooking lovely Syrah grapes and then let's just go and check this is what we're doing now checking the fences as well to make sure that the wild boar haven't come anywhere in they did get into this vineyard last week uh, they actually ram raided the this fence just down here so let's just go and check that this fence is still intact it looks fine um, Go and have a look and a quick look at the soil. So perfect vineyard soil here. It's limestone. So it's like limestone scree that's come down off the Tosh Mountain, which is limestone uh, and provides drainage in what is otherwise a sort of clay style soil, but perfect for drainage and for these grapes. Oh, look, just absolutely looking good. 
it's in, not overloaded. So these vines, they don't have to work too hard. There's not that many bunches. But what they have, just looking really, really good. So let's just nip round here, have a look at the fence. I'm glad those wild boar can't hear the hunting dogs anymore. And this is where they got in before, in this corner. We've also had a bit of problem with people turning off the battery on our electric fences. So that's, you know, and then some people must think it's a bit of fun to turn off our batteries during the night so that the wild boar can actually get in. So we're not only having to contend with potential wild boar getting in, we also have to keep checking to make sure that nobody's taken or turned the battery off which is just so, so annoying here. So this is where they got in. We had to actually mend the fence here, but it, it's looking fine. Just go up here, have a look at your questions. So for those of you joining me for the first time, bonjour and welcome. And also to say Domaine Jones, so we're based in the tiny little village of Touchon. It's Touchon, number two, two, and then Chon, like the sun shines, and Chon, Touchon. Uh, here on the border of the Languedoc Roussillon. And we've got 15 tiny little parcels of vines. Wow, look at that. I hear the north wind. Oh, it's lovely. And it's still quite fresh, that wind, at the moment. Ah, oh, so good to be back. So good to be back. So, a few more stones. You can see the, st the terroir is so stony, the soils making it really difficult on the tractor. Just makes everything hard work. And I was just going to check to see that the wires are still attached to the battery up here. And then would anybody interested in a ride in the Diane? The Diane's back up and working. Got it repaired while I was away. So uh, any of you who want to jump in the back seat uh, once this is over, I'll be signing off and then I'll sign back on again for the return journey in the Diane for those of you who'd like to join me. Okay, uh, here's the battery set up. So we're fine. Everything is still connected. I'm, I can hear it clicking. I'm not going to. Nikki, do you want to just touch this wire to see if we're still working? Right, I'll just get up here in the shade. Oh. So this is the Sam Rock Vineyard, the first vineyard that I bought in Touchon, and it enabled me to make the Fitu Appellation. So Fitu, always a blend of Carignan, Grenache, and Syrah. Let's take a look at your questions. Did you have a nice holiday? Thanks, Wine Time Lundy. Uh, man, thanks wine time London I did actually it's fabulous it wasn't long enough uh, a week in Biarritz but it was absolutely fantastic uh, just good to get away a week's break it's quite busy in Biarritz uh, but a nice place to go so did you pick the three varieties separately. Hi Karen, oh and if anybody, I sent out, Karen did a lovely ode uh, to the wine rambles, the vineyard rambles that I do. And I sent it out to a couple of people uh, through my newsletter. And I've had so many comments on it. So thanks very much, Karen. And I'll post it up on Facebook as well so people can read it. It's a great little ode, it's lovely. So yes, did we pick the three varieties separately? We actually picked the two varieties. So we picked the Carignan and the Grenache, we picked together. Um, and we will co-ferment them as well. So they'll go into the same tank. So we'll have a Carignan Grenache tank in the winery and we'll have a Syrah tank. So we pick the Syrah separately. The Syrah will ripen probably, because you never really know, before the Carignan and the Grenache. So we'll be coming up here picking off the wires. Uh, probably in about a month's time, months, five weeks time. Not long to go now. And Adam, good to see you, Adam. Um, so how will the heat wave affect the grapes? Um, hopefully, because 
Although it's a heat wave, it's more a heat wave because of the length of time. So it's at least three days with temperatures around about 34 degrees during the day. 34 degrees, it's not exceptionally hot for this area. Uh, and also Carignan or Grenache are the traditional grapes here and they love drought conditions, especially the old vines who have the root structure to be able to cope with it. So um, it shouldn't have any negative effect on my old vines and it should actually help to ripen those grapes and to ripen them evenly. Actually what we don't want is the north wind. So the north wind's blowing a bit this morning, it's still quite cool. Um, but during the day, if that north wind, if the temperatures rise, the north wind continues to blow, um, that's when it's basically, you walk outside, it's like a hairdryer or a fan oven, and that will dry the vines too much. So that will give too much heat. Uh, last year, I don't know if you remember, but in the longer dot, we had a terrible peak de chaleur. So a day of intense heat and it actually burnt the leaves. So that was the strength of the sun because of the high temperature that burnt the leaves. And then the grapes didn't ripen. We weren't too badly affected, but that's the heat wave is actually quite good now just to keep the grapes healthy and to get them to ripen. Let's just take a look. <laughs> good question here it's from uh, Tess. Hi Tess, are you on track for the harvest? Yes, we are getting there. So uh, as the grapes ripen now, uh, we think it's going to be perhaps a week earlier than usual. So we perhaps start picking at the end of August or the last week, around about the 25th of August for the whites. Um, it's so difficult to know the precise picking date. It's still too early because like the heat wave, if it, as long as it doesn't get too hot, it's gonna help ripen. If it gets too hot, then uh, the vines can actually um, shut down if it gets too hot and then ripening will take longer. So, you know, we're just hoping, but at the moment it's all looking really good which is fantastic news. Um, and now we just have to keep the wild boar out. We have to make sure that my little vines don't get stressed. And you actually call it that, uh, like stressed vines are vines that don't have enough water at this time of year. And uh, younger vines with a higher yield tend to get a lot more stressed, water stressed, uh, than my old vines, which are, they're so used to coping. After like 100 years, they're so used to coping with these drought conditions. So yes, we're on track. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, I will actually be taking you down into my winery so that you can have a look at the preparations that we're going to start soon. Yes, Tim, my back is, is better. Thank you so much for asking. The back's better, uh, the Diane's better, uh, the weather's great, so everything's hunky-dory down here. Uh, here's one, this is a technical question from the wine kiwi, kiwi to finish with. What's the approximately boom levels of the three varieties at the moment? Um, I have no idea. Uh, I would imagine that they're still really low um, because the veraison hasn't quite finished. So just looking at the potential alcohol through the sugar content in the grapes, this will be over the next, say in two weeks time, that's when we will actually start uh, using our refractometer to measure the sugar in the grapes and to get an idea of how ripe they are. I'd say, I guess they're probably still about six or seven, if that, up here. Uh, this is the last vineyard that we'll pick. So this is really the latest one to ripen. Uh, on Friday though, I'm going to take you down onto a lower vineyard. So I'm going to show you a couple of vineyards on Friday. I'm going to show you the Macabu. So we'll see how the Macabu is coming along. I'm also going to show you the Carignan and that bunch of grapes that we've been following through photos that Gilles took while I was on holiday to actually see the Veraison. So we're going to catch up with that bunch of grapes. If you haven't seen it, take a look on my Facebook page at the five photos of uh, this bunch of grapes, the same bunch of grapes every day. So we're going to catch up on that. We're going to look at the Carignan and then Friday evening, we're going to be out on the rock and we're going to be tasting Domaine Jones Grenache. So red Grenache on Friday evening on the rock. So Friday morning ramble and uh, evening on the rock with the Grenache Noir and Jean-Marc. Hopefully I'll catch up with Jean-Marc on Friday morning as well. Now I'm just going to try and get out of the vineyard over the fence. I can just hear a hunting dog there. 
So here's a hunting dog. Hello. I hope there's no wild boar, but he's obviously escaped. So I'm going to make a dash for it, get in the Diane, turn the engine on. For those of you who want to drive uh, with me, it's just a five minute drive back to the village of Touchon. So I'll see you in a minute and thanks so much for joining. Bye.